What's good everybody, Chris here again. Chris Goes Outdoors. Today, in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the Mountain Laurel Designs Dual Mid Shelter. So this is a pyramid style tent that I picked up off the interwebs used. I did not buy straight from Mountain Laurel Designs just because it takes about three months to get new gear from them at the moment. And this is a pyramid style shelter that I picked up with winter backpacking specifically in mind. So I've been taking a look at possible winter shelters. This one came up. I also picked up a freestanding option, which I'm not too sure about. I haven't shown it in a video. I've also been considering hammocking. So out of all of them, this is by far the lightest option. So the actual pyramid tent, which is inside here, you can see too just how well this thing compresses down. So the tent, the stuff sack, and they also include this little extender pole for your trekking pole, which if I use with my current trekking pole, the Black Diamond Alpine Carbon Corks, it is just a bit too small, but they include it anyway. I do have a larger pole to use in the video, but the whole thing weighs in just over one pound. I'll put the actual weight down here. So we're gonna give the tent a little test run and set up. I've already set the tent up previously, but that was literally just to seam seal it, but I never really played with it. I essentially seam sealed it, took it down, and it's been stored ever since. I have a little ultralight sleep system I've been messing with, so we'll put that under there, get an idea of size. This should fit two people and some gear. And I also have the ground sheet for another tent that I reviewed from uh, Nature Hike, their Clad Up 2 tent. I'm gonna try the ground sheet in here as well since this is just the actual tent fly, essentially. There's no internet and there's no floor to the tent. Enough babbling, we'll uh, pull this thing out. We'll give it a little setup. Let's do this thing. So this tent is a pretty easy setup, all things considered. So you're essentially supposed to set the thing up squared at the sides or rectangled. If that makes any sense at the sides. <laughs> then pop the tent pole in and you should be good to go. So we're gonna lay it out. Ooh, wanna get that zipper zipped up. All right, so we got it all zipped up. We'll lay it down right there. And where it is a little windy, I did this on the trail a lot too. If it was a little windy up, I'll just uh, pop a couple sticks or logs down. Supposed to try to line up two sides, get a nice straight angle, then do the same thing with the back two sides and get nice straight angles all around. Got one in. All right, so we got them front two pulled. We uh, will go on, move on to the next corner. So I'm trying to maintain the angle that the pyramid will go up in. I think it's 45 degrees. I'm terrible with math and geometry, so if I'm wrong, uh, shoot me, whatever. So I believe it's 45 degrees. You can see this one, maybe, is uh, right at a 45 degree angle. I'll try to keep this one maintaining that same angle. Keeping the tarp as straight on as we can. And then last, toss in the last stake, move out these. That looks about good right here. So the next thing to do is to take the little pole extender that it comes with. And I believe, I think I saw online that they want it to reach 54 inches max height or something like that. I'll put the actual height that they say it should line up with down below, but we're just gonna give this a shot. This is a Cascade Mountain carbon fiber flip lock pole. So they go up to 135 centimeters listed, which is 54 inches. So I set it just a little bit above that. Unzip the zipper slightly, and then place in the pole. And then the pole goes right up into the top here, right into the, the little nub of, uh, I guess you call it the hood or the opening. And there you have it. <laughs> you are essentially set up. So we'll try to tension up the guy lines a little at the corners. Let's try to get a little more uh, taut pitch here. And then last but not least, you can stake out the side guy lines. I don't think I would really do that often unless um, I was in some pretty treacherous conditions anyway. So pop the last stake right there in the front and there we have it. So we'll pop this thing open. Again, we got the little clip down here. So we'll undo the clip. We'll tuck this little door back. You can tuck it back. It's got a uh, fabric loop right here on the side and then a toggle on the inside. I have right here, and this is the little ultralight sleep system I was kind of talking about. 
So I've been messing around anyway with three little pieces of uh, the Thermarest z light right here and the Gossamer Gear 1 8 inch foam pad. So we'll toss that down inside just so you can uh, get a look. So one of the biggest plus sides and downsides I feel like of the Pyramid Tent, one pole which to me is pretty sweet. I've been finding myself hiking with one trekking pole regularly now. I feel like, especially in the White Mountains where I hike, it's better to have one and have another hand free to kind of maneuver about. Great that it sets up with one pole. It is a little unfortunate that that pole happens to be right in the middle of the tent, but either way, it's nice, super roomy. So I would probably consider this right where I would end up sleeping if I'm, um, I were in this tent, if, especially if um, I had two people. If uh, I was only me, I would probably sleep on this side. At six feet tall, I have more than enough space. Like, you could probably be six five plus and maybe still fit in here. Yeah, space for days. Plenty, plenty of room on the inside here. So yeah, I mean, when I'm sitting up, my head's just brushing against the thing, but when I sit up in the middle here, two feet of room probably above me. They got some uh, mitten hook type things here on the inside too. So you can clip an internet or something to it. They do make different sized internets as well. So you can get one for the whole space. You can get one for just this particular section. So it's a pretty versatile shelter all around. Can't beat the weight on this. I mean, just over a pound. And with the ground sheet, with the one I have with me, I'll show that in a minute. You'd be looking at probably under two pounds, uh, maybe right around two pounds if I had like uh, winter steaks and stuff with me. I don't know how much you can see on the side, but it's it's a lot of room for sure. So I'll try to close one door, give you a different angle just so you can see how much room is on the outside. I'll give you a peek on the actual inside of the tent too momentarily. You can see right here too, this is uh, the z Pax R call that is laying next to me. And there's, I don't know, five, six inches of space between me and the pack. And there's probably another foot plus of space between uh, the pack and the actual door here. Now you may see too, the door is up really high off the ground. If we were to put this down connected to the other door, that will definitely lower how high up the actual door pitch is. And I also didn't stake this directly to the ground. So there's uh, maybe four to five inches of space along the bottom. Letting a nice amount of air in, but it's not like, it's not gonna kill you, of course. And up here too, I think you can maybe see, but at the top here, there's also a little vent. You can lock that up, cinch that up too. But anyways, I'll pull the camera inside here. I'll close up the doors, keep the doors open. I'll let you see around, take a look at uh, the inside of the tent. So let's do it. So I mentioned just before the, um, the little opening here, you can see inside there. So it's Velcro right here, and then Velcro on this part right here above. And the big plus of that is if you don't need that ventilation, you can just pop it down. There's a little plastic piece inside of here. Right there, you can see that you can pull out and then uh, just Velcro that up. Most people, most of the time, would probably want that additional ventilation though. You can see there's a loop on here too. This would be useful uh, if, let's say you didn't have trekking poles and you still needed to set the tent up, you could tie that off on some line, throw it over a tree or something, and then kind of pull the tent up instead of using the poles. But yeah, let's go inside, check it out. All right, so we are using a pretty wide angle lens. Even still, I think this gives you a much better idea of the space within this tent. And you can see up there where the pole goes in. I'll give you a closer look at that right now. So it just goes right into the top there. It is reinforced. And there's also a couple mitten clips up there. Right there, there's two. But I don't know how well you can see in uh, this lighting. You can see there where the vent is. It's all still reachable from the inside. Then the uh, zipper right there. You can see where the guy lines connect. All sorts of space. So right there is where I'm hitting the actual uh, side of the tent. Tons of space. can see headwise. My head is just brushing up now when I'm leaning, but if I were closer to the middle, I could sit up no problem. You see, it's near me, but you know, it's far away enough that I don't have an issue sitting up. This is the little tie out for the door right here, but they got the mitten hooks, one, two, and then three, four in the back corners there. And just plenty, plenty of room right there as well for another person or for gear. Coming from someone that used 
a small single person shelter like the Soulplex. This is like having a mansion. <laughs> so we'll close the door, we'll uh, lock it into place, zip it down, show you how much room we got when this thing's all uh, batten down into a kind of storm mode. So we're back inside. You can uh, kind of see that the uh, doors are all closed up now. You can see just how much room I got over here. And again, this is a wide angle lens and it may make things look maybe smaller or bigger, I guess, but it is plenty roomy, I would say, for two. Kick your gear around, you know, leave it at your head or uh, your feet for sure. This is absolutely massive, in my opinion, for one person. Initially, I wasn't too sure about this tent. I've uh, actually kind of been trying to sell it a little bit, but now that I'm in it with, you know, the pole properly situated and uh, just seeing how much space is actually inside of it, I think I'm gonna hold on to it. I think I'm definitely gonna give this thing a test run in the winter. So this is, uh, this is pretty legit for sure. So I'm gonna try to pop in now the little ground sheet that I had from the nature hike tent. In general, in the winter, I'm gonna want a ground sheet. I'm not gonna want to camp right on the snow, preferably if I don't have to. So we'll try uh, try to pop that ground sheet in and um, see how that works out too. So we've got the ground sheet right here. I don't know the actual size of this ground sheet. I'll try to put it in the video if I can find it. Roll this bad boy out. So the Nature High ground sheet is a little bit undersized for it, but could make it work for sure. The Nature Hike one has little grommets on the end and little things that you could stake in actually if you wanted to, but I could just as easily connect and I'm pretty sure that's what this is on here for. There's little pieces of shock cord here, so I could probably just do, you know, some sort of knot here, hook in the, uh, the shock cord there. <laughs> it works very well actually. So maybe we'll go around, try that on all the edges I guess. Even though it's not technically a perfect fit, the MLD Duomid came with the shock cord. At least when I got it, it was used. I assume that this is stock factory MLD too. Pop the uh, little sleep system back in here. It's pretty legit. <laughs> I'll give you uh, a little look on the inside with the uh, ground sheet attached. The shock cord is attached to the little corner loop right there and you can see too it has the line lock three adapters on there i absolutely love these in all honesty once you use them it's very hard to go back to like other systems there is nothing quicker in my experience than those uh, line lock three adapters and then the shock cord just runs right here you can see the nature hike ground sheet here i just did a little knot right there and hooked it to that it's essentially working very very well Hope that gives you an idea too. You know, just general space-wise, what you got in there. So I guess overall thoughts, one of the biggest pros I think about this tent is the options you have. You can take it just out with the fly if you want, no problem. You can buy the half internet, like I said, use it for yourself, have room outside of here, no problem. You can buy the double internet. You can really kind of customize it to what you need. So this is the Sil Nylon version, weighing in with the actual tent itself, stuff sack, and the pole, I'll put the weight, it's, it's just over a pound. I mean, that's impressive. And you can get it in Cuban fiber too. I mean, you're gonna pay for it. Cuban fiber is expensive, but it's an option if you want to go even lighter. So plenty of room to move around and stuff. I'm pretty accustomed to tight spaces and tents. Again, I use the Z-Pack Soulplex on the AT. <laughs> I've showed that tent to people and they're like, you used that the whole trail? <laughs> I don't know, I, it worked well for me, but this thing is, is palatial, I guess you would call it. It's a, a mansion compared to my little shed of a tent that I used on the Appalachian Trail. It's great that, you know, a ground sheet that wasn't included with the tent, it's just something I had from a previous, you know, test run review of a product. Will also work well with this. Good in the winter um, because it deals with snow pretty well, falling snow pretty well, deals with wind pretty well. I can batten it down straight to the ground if I want to, just stake it out right into the ground so there's no gaps between me and the outside world. Got all the mitten hooks and stuff hanging in here so you can clip 
you know, internets and other bug nets and type of stuff to it, you know, really customize the, uh, the tent for you. So it seems like a pretty cool tent. One of the biggest downsides with Mount Laurel Designs, ultralight companies, and especially the kind of one-off cottage companies as they are referred to, usually really long wait times. We're in the beginning of September right now, 2018. Mount Laurel Designs has about a three month wait on gear. Uh, z -packs, I think, still sitting at six weeks. Uh, you know, a lot of the companies, they have a really long wait for gear, so it's kind of hard to uh, buy these on a whim. So if you research it and you really want it, you're gonna have to plan far in advance most of the time to get gear like this. Now, I'm not telling you to buy the tent. I'm not, not telling you to buy the tent. Just take the info I've showed you, the pictures and stuff I've showed you. Take a look. If it fits your hiking style, if it's something you enjoy, Either way, if you like it, go for it. If not, whatever. I want you to get the right product for you. And I hope this video helps you in doing so one way or the other. So with that said, I'm kind of out of things to say. This was just an initial impression video, not a review in the slightest. Have not used this tent out in the field at all. So this is the first time officially really setting it up. That's gonna do it, everyone. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, drop it a like. If you loved it, consider commenting, subscribing, maybe even sharing on the interwebs, the social medias, which you can also follow me on Instagram if you care to, at Chris Goes Outdoors. But don't feel obligated. Social media is pretty lame and uh, takes up too much of your time. Go do other things. Go play outside. And that's gonna do it, everyone. Hope the video was helpful. We'll see you in the next one.